It's been five whole months since we've installed our Starlink in motion satellite on top of our van. And in this video, we're gonna give you a solid review. Let's roll the footage. Hello fellow humans. If you are new here, my name is Trey. My partner Addie is not here with me today as she's traveling back home to see some family. We are currently traveling the US in our DIY Sprinter van that we built, having full-time jobs in Nashville, Tennessee. We've been documenting our travels here on this channel, so make sure you do subscribe so you don't miss out on seeing our beautiful faces every week. And if you guys haven't seen the unboxing and installation video, you can check that out in the link through the description below. First and foremost, Starlink has been an incredible addition to our van, working, editing, gaming, and communicating with family in the middle of nowhere all throughout the country has been frankly unbeatable. Starlink is by no means a replacement, it is a solution. For those of you who live in rural areas or you travel in a van or a boat full time, this option is for you. I first wanna talk about the setup of Starlink. Now we did the install ourselves and used magnets of course to attach the satellite on top of our van. So the setup costs zero seconds to set this thing up. All you do is put your van in park or you can actually travel down the road and have high speed internet as well. It's actually unbeatable at that point. Now, I've seen people where they can mount those fixed dishes, but uh, for us, the in-motion satellite dish mounted to the van with magnets has worked out perfectly. We have not had one instance where we thought the satellite would blow off. We've experienced some gnarly crosswinds coming from Reno or from Vegas to Reno. So I think we're I think we're okay with those magnets. Next up, the cost of Starlink. We purchased the hardware for roughly $2,500, and on top of that, the service was $135 per month. And since then, the rates have increased from $135 to $150 per month. That is a little steep for having a internet solution, but having internet in the middle of nowhere, once again, is almost unbeatable. So if you have that in your budget to afford, they went up $15, yes. But uh, yeah, $135 to $150 per month. Again, you have high-speed internet in the middle of nowhere. So you can weigh those options out yourself. Nice. A couple of things that we experienced was snow melt. The satellite itself is built in with a heating element, so when there's snow on top of your satellite, it melts right off, and so you can actually have access to the satellites in orbit. We experienced that in Reno. We stayed on top of Mount Rose, experienced some gnarly, gnarly winds, gnarly snowfall, and we had high-speed internet. No complaints. Now, before I get into the speed test, I want to talk about power consumption. The power consumption has been a slight downside to us having high speed internet. We are still powered by AC power, which means we are plugged into an outlet, which means we have to have our inverter turned on, which then draws even more power. On some of those hazier, rainy, foggy days, we don't have the sun powering our solar system. So sometimes we catch ourselves having to turn the van on so the alternator can kick in and charge the batteries that way, which kind of has been a hassle here in LA with the June gloom. There is an option to convert from AC power to DC power. It is a little complicated and we are looking into that solution. So maybe in the third review of Starlink, we'll have that install too because having the inverter on has been draining, pun intended. Now Starlink does have an ethernet cord adapter. So we purchased it through a third party Amazon supplier. It didn't cost but like a 20, $25. You just plug your ethernet cable in, plug it into your router and you're good to go. So that has actually increased our strength a little bit. We're gonna hop into some speed tests here in a moment. We're gonna speed test a couple of things guys. We're gonna speed test going down the road, parked with obstructions in the way and also with wireless and wired. So let's get the speed test rolling. All right, we're gonna go ahead and sit down for this part here. We're gonna do a couple of speed test. The first one, we're gonna be connected wirelessly to our router. So here we go, the first test. Wow, we are reaching speeds well over 100 megabytes per second already while we are connected wirelessly. Now we have zero obstructions today. It's a beautiful, clear day uh, here in Venice Beach, Los Angeles. So 105 megabytes per second download wirelessly. That is really good compared to what I have been getting. And it looks like we're gonna finish somewhere around nine or 10 megabytes per second on the upload. 9.67, so 105 download, 9.67 upload. That is the best I have seen it in a while. And once again, we have zero obstructions. We have clear skies above us, so that is actually pretty decent. Let's go ahead and plug in directly to our router via the ethernet cable, and we'll run another test. And we are off already reaching speeds over 149, 152. 
All right, so 173 megabytes per second while we are hardwired in with zero obstructions overhead. And we're gonna finish at 15.54 megabytes per second on the upload. That is us being hardwired into the modem, and that's the best I've seen since we've got Starlink, to be honest with you. We just recently purchased the Ethernet adapter, so that does play a big role into having better speeds. And obviously, zero obstructions and clear skies is gonna help with that too. Now next, we're gonna be doing some speed tests while we're driving down the road. Let's go. Okay guys, now Addy and I are about to do the speed test while we're actually driving down the road. We are in Venice, which has a bunch of palm trees, power lines, and uh, all the above. So it's gonna be, um, there's gonna be obstructions. So just you so you know. Cute. Do I? Yeah. Oh, thanks. So there will be obstructions and uh, this hopefully will give us an accurate-ish reading. We're still gonna get some decent speed, I think, but this is the in motion speed test while we're driving down the road. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. Okay guys, so here goes the speed test while we are in motion driving down the road. Now, reminder once again, there are obstructions, trees, power lines, all of the above. So hopefully this gives us a decent reading. Speed test, first try, here we go. And as you can see, we're almost about 45 megabytes per second download. And now let's see about the upload. The upload speed is seven megabytes per second, which is not the best that I've seen, but that is us traveling down the road at about 15 miles per hour. All right, so let's do the speed test again. We are at about 20, 25 miles per hour going down the road. I think we cleared some obstructions back on the other roads. We did increase our miles per hour, so how fast you're traveling, I don't think seems to matter. We are at 167 megabytes per second on the download, 167, and the upload is down to two, which is pretty bad, but considering our download speed actually increased, it's kind of strange. I think we just cleared some, some trees and stuff, so now we're on the open road a little bit, so. There you have it, that's a couple of speed tests while we're in motion, let's move on. All right guys, that's gonna wrap up our Starlink review. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. It helps our channel out, it helps us grow, and it costs you absolutely nothing. If you have any other questions, drop those down in the comments below. We'll do our best to answer each and every one of those. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see y'all in the next one.